shout hallelujah. Let's let's have our seats. We give thanks to God who has given us reasons to celebrate, especially to celebrate our children as we mark the children's day 2024 in this church. I want to say that um, I'm highly impressed with what with the presentations we have this morning and I want to thank God for our teachers for the great work God has given them the grace to do it's not easy to teach children um, the memory scriptures I'm sure that if I ask two adults, some adults to stand up and give us just two memory scriptures. I'm sure some people may not be able to quote John 3.16 correctly. So it is not, it's just a challenge that let's also learn to have some scriptures at our fingertips. So when you read the Bible, don't just read the Bible try and memorize some scriptures so I want to thank God for that please let them keep up the tempo don't let it be only during special programs like this let them keep up the tempo you are giving, you are storing reprogramming their mind the more they have so they should not forget they should be able to learn more and um I begin to see that we are broadcasters in the house. The phonetics that um, the way they convey, they spoke. I am impressed, highly impressed. So you know that all these children, you adult, when you speak grammar, they just look at you that daddy and mommy, they don't know how to speak English. They just keep quiet because I'm sure they are learning fast and that is um, what is expected of our children let's expose them to the best of learning let's, let's do all to pay for them to learn how to speak good English and let them also learn how to speak good vernacular whichever one is your vernacular whether it is Yoruba or Igbo is very very important and of course skills I'm sure that at another time they will come and display some skills alright we have seen skills in the area of singing they conducted the worship today and the special numbers I'm sure that um, we are going to I've been saying that that we are going to retain the, uh, the young choir so all those that sang today Make sure you register your name as the children choir. Praise God. Of which, with great time, you are going to meet on Saturdays to sing. Even if it is just two Saturdays in the month, for you to train and we know that there will be a Sunday presentation at least once in a month. Amen. Is that all right? So let us encourage all these gifts that God has given to us and let them ex get exposed to playing instruments um, if we are children are ready if you are ready to bring them I said it sometimes that in abroad you cannot keep your children away from learning one skill or the other you have to labor to take them to learn how to swim music, dancing and all the stuff so parents um, is part of our responsibility and if they can learn all those things, they will be a blessing to the kingdom of God and also to the church of God. Hallelujah. And I'm sure that, um, don't worry, next uh, year, Children's Day, there will be better uh, a session of um, refreshment. But I know that mommy has put some things in place for you to be refreshed. So the children, you are going to be refreshed before you go. Shout hallelujah. As a shout hallelujah. hallelujah yeah also in addition we want to challenge us 
to raise the prayer tempo in the church one of the ways to grow is to I mean spiritually is to have responsibilities so I want to have an, um, um, an um, I mean a window of opportunity for those who are to join the um, just like um, being part of the prayer band prayer band is still there but those who can uh, spare time Monday 5 p.m. am I right prayer band you made five is this five or six six p.m. all right and also on is it Friday or Saturday and also Saturday um, do you want to pray for the church if we want to grow more it needs prayers the volume of prayers we are able to raise will determine the manifestations of God it is our church so I'm not saying whether you are joining prayer band now but we want to have a prayer squad a praying squad let's push it and see what is going to happen in the next three months you understand so if you are there and God is touching your heart to get involved in prayers I'm self, myself I'm going to give attention to that all right to see that that department this squad you know function very well see pastor Joshua the prayer leader in the church to put down your name but you must want to create I don't it doesn't matter whether you are a worker or you are a member whatever you are whether you are in the, the, any department but you want to make sacrifice in the place of prayers and I believe that as you pray for God's work to expand God is there also to take care of your own personal needs the Lord will help us in Jesus name Amen. and of course our children have done given about the broadcast of the programs ahead so if you have not heard you are hearing that there is going to be a couple's program there is going to be <clears throat> some other special programs uh, as the year runs the Lord help us in Jesus name let's pray together father we thank you we give you praise lord because you have used our children even to preach to the parent to preach to the adults lord i ask that this moment god you will use me to speak in a specific terms for those who are in need of the message of the moment in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. I'll be speaking on parenting. Just parenting. And um, why are we talking about parenting? is because parenting is a task it is a responsibility parenting is a manufacturing house <clears throat> parenting is a production mechanism to bring out a good product <clears throat> and when it is not well handled the outcome of the production will be a bad uh, response or a, pro a bad product at the end of the day take for example if you have a place where bread is being uh, produced if the baker make a mistake because the process of baking bread or baking cake there are so many things that goes into it so many things that go into it and um, if you don't do it right by the time you put any of these either cake or bread in the oven the product the hand products can be bad or can be good parenting is just like that I was telling 
when I was running off with the Yoruba church, I said that home, parents are the first teacher to their children. It is not the people you, the school you send your children to that are called teachers. Uh, parents are the teachers, the first teacher. Daddy and mommy, you are teachers. But before I go on, let me read the book of Proverbs 22. Our children have read it to us. But let's look at it. It says, train up a child. Proverbs 22 verse 6. Train up a child in the way he shall go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Manufacture a child. Take a child through a production line. Train up a child. Mentor a child. Raise a child. Develop a child through a process. The outcome at the end of the day, the Bible says that it shall be good. Because the expectation of that production line will be achieved. That's why I use production, you know, as an example. So the Bible now says that if we take a child through a process of training, he said, that child, the end result is that you will not depart from it. In the Bible reading, we learn that children are God's heritage. That God's property. <clears throat> and that children, it is it's a blessing. That the children, they shall surround our table. They are blessed. Parents are blessed when they have children. And I want you to understand that many of you, you don't appreciate the children God has given to you. Hallelujah. Those who are married and they don't have child, they are the one that can appreciate what it means to have children. Hallelujah. So, that is it. Verse 15 of that same uh, proverb. It says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. I know that if you read this scripture in America or in Britain, in the advanced country, they will say, rod, that you don't cane a child. Now you see, when the Bible uses the word rod here, it depends on what you interpret the rod to mean. David was talking, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. When it was any, he said, uh, he said, the rod. He said what? Thy rod and thy staff. You do what? They comfort me. So thy rod and thy staff thy rod and thy staff so they comfort me obviously David is not talking about God bringing came from heaven to beat him so when you look at it I know so many in our Yoruba uh, we have interpreted rod to become cane koboko whip and say that is what the rod is no I'm not saying that that is totally out of place but at the same time, the rod should not just be, uh, 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 I mean, defined naturally like that and say, okay, a rod. You know, you know that of the, the Yoruba is even stronger. <laughs> Praise God. So, Praise God. So, what the Bible calls foolishness, we are in Yoruba. Praise God. But let's look at it. I just given you another scripture. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. What is rod in that context that David was talking about? 
is talking about chastisement rebuke okay rebuke right that is when i'm rendered whenever i am doing what is wrong the rod of god does not spare me god will rebuke me god may punish me god may you know chastise me then said thy staff the staff is a guide all right the staff is the word of god so both the rebuke and biblical instruction they bring comfort they bring what they bring comfort so we have established that scripture to tell us that if we train a child in the way that he should go when he's grown he will not depart from it but one of two things that are very very important as part of the instrument of training that child is the rod right corrections rebuke parenting is the process of promoting and supporting the physical emotional social spiritual and intellectual development of a child from infancy to adulthood that is what parenting is it is a process a process that we promote and support the physical the emotional the social life of a child that your child knows how to behave you know in the social space your child has character your child has a sense of decorum all right that when he misses or he interacts with people in the society this is not going to bring you shame because he is too tall he is not sure that child is trained how to relate in the society somebody follow me that is parenting and i mentioned you know the emotional development of a child that your child is emotionally balanced he has emotional support self-esteem emotional intelligence he understand or she understand how to be how to carry herself that's why i said the home is the first training school of a child the parents they are the first teacher they are the first instructors of a child so when you train a child and the child is emotionally balanced emotionally balanced is not thrown into crisis your child is not witnessing you cursing your husband or the husband cursing the wife or misbehavior between husband and wife because all those things you are programming their mind you are teaching them you are trained you are molding them that this is the way to behave this is the way you know to relate you know with people right now there are children that don't know how to curse amen i can say categorically that i am not i'm not sure i can say that my children till they come to adulthood i cannot imagine them cursing anybody because they have not learned curse how to curse at home are you getting my point now but there are homes that cursing is like a batting water between husband and wife is that not so the curse because or outburst i'm sure that in about 29 years of our marriage our children have not seen an outburst between me i serve and my wife i'm not saying we don't have misunderstanding i'm not saying that we don't quarrel misunderstanding is not a fight we misunderstand and we have to talk until we understand you understand what i'm saying now but it is not an outburst that i will shout on my wife keep your mouth shut you are not serious even you don't can say you don't know what you are doing eh? or she will just say go and sit down this and that they have never witnessed such things and so it is not possible for my children that are uh, uh what do you call it now that are guys let me use the word guys for them praise god for them now to say they want to have a child i mean a wife 
and the wife will be afraid that I hope this man that I'm not going to marry is not going to be uh, what do you call it now you know a woman not just bitter will not be a kind of a terror all right will not be a person that want to uh, 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 you know to, 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 to capitalize on the gender in order to torture I'm sure that if I have any uh, daughters in law coming around uh, they should be rest assured that I do not raise such children the child that will be that will shout against the wife or or I mean outdoors have did not raise those children they have never seen it they have never learned in, in the first place they were learned. They can now see some other things outside, but because they can understand that I know. You know, the Yoruba that I used to say in those days, our elderly people, when children are going out of the home, when you're not your many tea, he won't she. And if you look at our elderly people then, in those days, you will see the way they operate. They may not understand some things. But they are a kind of a, 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 a legacy they bequeathed to the children. Praise God. Either consciously or unconsciously. And I don't have a daughter that wants to shout on the husband and uh, this and that. Because if you raise them properly, training them in every aspect of life, there is a point that you have to trust God for other parents because I'm going to talk about that. That parenting does not end with your biological children. So we have seen what now you see parenting also refers to the aspect of raising a child other than the biological relationship. Our Yoruba age is you know Yoruba Yoruba is, is solid. Yoruba will say it is only one person that gives birth to a child. Is that not so? but it is 200 people that raised that child. I think I'm correct in the in that interpretation. Oju Kolum Bima Igbanya Loshikini Longwo They understood parenting that in fact, if another mommy sees you outside in those days or saw you outside and now say that ah, what are you wearing? I'm going to tell your mommy. You begin to beg. Abi? If you misbehave outside, he said, ah, the son of so, so and so, you are the one talking like this. If the woman has not even punished you outside, and said, I'm going to report to your dad, you know you are in trouble. So, but this is not the age that said, what's your own there? Are you my mother? Are you my mommy? We say there is a generation we call the Gen Z. And we have the Gen Z, which is from between 1997, born in 1997 to about 2012. They are the Gen Z generation. They are the graduate you have produced in the last how many years now. They are the kind of people that are not ready to do anything. All what we want to do is to show off. Praise God. Mm -hmm. They are not ready to do anything. If you give them responsibility, they will play, they will fail woefully. And here they are first class. First class in the classroom that cannot be defended outside. So many of them that are not properly raised. That's why I say we are having problem with the a generation we call the Gen Z, this age bracket. You see them everywhere. All that concern is fashion. All they want to do is music. All they want to do is dancing. All they want to, they are not ready to do anything that is hard. Praise God. But thank God for those who are the Gen Z who are properly also raised in the homes, who are trained in the home. They are still till, till uh, 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 bearers. Praise God. But there is a generation that is coming. If care is not taken, that all these are children we have seen, the majority of them fall into, we call them Generation Alpha. Is Gen Alpha. Gen Alpha is between around 2013, 2014 to date. They are the real 21st century children. 
Alambe. Praise God. If we don't do what is needful, you are talking, you are complaining about generation Gen Z. The Gen Alpha will be worse. Because they are bold unnecessarily. Some of the things they do because they were guided to do it well. All right? You can't face crowd when you are their age. Praise God. In your age, in your you mommies, especially you mommies that are 40 or 35 to 40. In your age, when adult is talking, you look down. But these ones, they look up, they look up to you. Because that is what is encouraged. I want to tell you it's a sign of a self-esteem, boldness. Look eyeball to eyeball. Amen. But in your own generation, nobody born you well. That your mommy is talking, your daddy is talking, and you are looking eyeball to eyeball. Ah. Praise God. Hallelujah. But that is their generation. They are wired. They look at you face to face. There is not some things you cannot say. They say they can tell you anything. Daddy, you see, ah, no, daddy, you don't know that thing. Daddy, you are not correct. You are not going to tell your parents in those days that they are not correct. Even if they are wrong. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. But they will tell you, mommy, you are wrong. You are wrong. That is not how to say it. They will correct you. They will do everything. They will do everything. We call them gen alpha. It's called a generator. <laughs> People like call generator alpha. Praise God. Amen. But we can train them. All those things, the boldness, the self-esteem, all these things that they have been exposed to can be used to their advantage. You don't need to tell, you begin to wonder a two-year-old uh, child, three-year-old child. Give your phone to a two-year-old child, three-year-old child, the thing you don't know on that phone since you have been carrying it around is going to operate that phone. Is that not so? Yes, you will manipulate that phone and give you results. Because some of you parents that are having, I have Android. I had Android. What are you using the Android for? WhatsApp. Facebook. What else again? If you have Zoom meeting, once in, some people, you cannot even set up Zoom on your phone. What they call Snapchat, you don't know. What they call uh, Google, whatever. You, the Google Meet, you don't know. Which one is Google Meet again? Uh -uh. What they call what again? Talk to talk. You don't know. They say, you say, ah, no, 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 no. But, hello? Hello? That is all you see in the phone. And you, are, you don't need all those phones. You should have gone and buy the Pano Pano one. Not to waste your money. If it is the hello, hello, and that talk can send text, have you? But you go and buy. I have Android. Apple, you are wasting your money because you don't know how to use it. But all those young ones, they will get a result out of it. But buy it. Guide them to use it for their homework. Praise God. And the generation, you know, so many things. You want to write letter now. You don't worry yourself. AI is there. There is something you want to write that AI will not write for you. Praise God. Anything you ask, AI will give you the answer. Praise the Lord. You are not answering. Praise the Lord. That's, our gener that's the generation where they are operating. I was telling my wife, I said, I want to improve my uh, PowerPoint skill to be able to do some of the PowerPoint. I think after that, I thought that he just sent a package to me that you don't even need to know PowerPoint before you do PowerPoint. Everything you want to write, just put it there. Tell the PowerPoint to do it. It will put the image, put everything, do everything for you. That is the generation where they are operating from. So what will take us five hours to do? The engineering, the technology, we make them to do it in 25 minutes. But we can help them, parent them, 
along the line of all these opportunities so that they will become harrows in the hands of the mighty the bible described them he said children they are the rarity, they are like arrows in the hand of the mighty what does the mighty man a strong man what do you do arrow to do you shoot arrow so that when they are shot in the area of their destiny to any part of the world if they are shot in the area of discipline all right i mean the area of career they will begin to excel because they are well packaged from home the first teacher are the parents the second teacher may be the school they attend and of course the third teacher is also the society they find themselves but before the society begin to teach them you teach them train them praise God I say praise the Lord so I say parenting also refers to aspect of raising a child other than the biological relationship not only those that are biologically born all right when you assume a parenting status if you know yourself you know what parenting is other children around you will know how to, you begin to look for how to help them especially if they come out from dysfunction homes there are lots of children that are raised from dysfunction families dysfunction homes it is either there is fighting there are crises there are you know a lot of uh, 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 you know wrong things going on in such family or there is a divorce the man is not there the woman is not there and things like that and so if you find yourself now you can play the role of a father to such children you can play the role children that have lost their moms and you can see them you can play the role of mothers to them that is parenting it is not just a casual say oh how are you i hope you are doing fine i hope you are facing your studies no the way you are to raise your children giving attention to to your children such children in the church in the community also you create a rapport and i want to tell you that god has given us different ways to win souls into the kingdom but we are missing out of it i've said it here before praise god when you are buying biscuits or for those who are in america cookies praise god you're buying cookies buying this and this for your children you know you go and the market you put it in also what to put in their bag when they are going to school every morning all right do you know that how much do you what things that may be a little bit expensive now do you know that if you spend half of what you or one quarter of what you use to buy for your children if there is a child in the neighborhood who is going to public school amen is somebody listening to me who is going to public school who you know that is not as privileged like you and you buy such snacks and you go and give to the mommy and say ah, mommy so so and so please this is for so so and so when he's going to school every money please let him take this to school or you buy a school bag you cannot sponsor the person in a private school but the public school that the child is attending you are contributing to development of that child you think that if you invite such a mommy or daddy to church they will not come talk to me the gospel has changed in those days you go to people's house i'm not saying we, should, we we keep on doing it but you see our world is becoming you know difficult you go to people's house oh good afternoon this and that i've come to preach the word of god and things like that beautiful we are still going to do house to house evangelism but you see there is what we call community transformation that you are a light bearer in that environment environment place of your work environment place of your uh, uh, i mean where you live you can do something to change you know the, the social status of that environment by living the life of christ from inside to outward is somebody getting it it's very simple some things you do that you will win the heart of such parents and they say ah, thank you very much this and that 
will you now say we are we're having a children day you want to invite that child he's a son of elijah he's a daughter of elijah do you think they will not allow their children to go they say ah that mommy that he said um, you know who bought school bag for a child who bought socks for a child who buy this for a child who is giving them you know monthly uh, biscuits and whatever or juice you understand that? cheese balls how much of those all these things cost you are winning the heart of such parents they can see the light they can see i've seen a man who came here or i, I mean maybe came here or maybe talking to my brother he was quoting that the man said ah that church ah when they are doing medical something they give us drugs they give us hair eyeglasses then also they figure this and i say oh which of our muslim people can do that eh? which of our muslim it was a man maybe muslim maybe an allergy you know saying that oh, all the affairs cannot do. ah i like that church i like that church now if you have access to the children of such a man and we take it beyond when they come to assist them you think they will not allow their children to go to church shout hallelujah shout hallelujah uh, there is this story i've said it here before but let me repeat it a sister was living in a house of course it is face me and face view house okay she has a room there you know in face me and face you they have one kitchen is that also the road has a kitchen you have one kitchen maybe one or two bathroom and so on and so forth and everybody has his own corner in the kitchen are you following me are you forgotten him have you never lived in face man face house before eh? is it because god has blessed you you don't live in flat <laughs> amen now everybody has his own corner and it's those days it's, it's days that people use pot clay pot and this sister has pot you know there are some things you know if you come from clay pot is good for some things better than all this uh, uh, something so what is all the problem we are having cancer uh, this and that our parents in those days they don't know anything like cancer they eat natural food they use pot to cook mama shohinga akpe abi obi akpe de mandu ade bunani praise god i know the gen z don't you understand what we are saying talk less of generation alpha praise god in those days see we don't have fridge but there is a pot of water um, you put water there and they cover it put it in the corner of the room and interestingly the water not like cold you know like fridge but because it is in that clay pot it maintain a kind of it cannot be hot we will take it and there is neatness there is one there is a cup you are going to use to take it and you will cover it and drop it god have mercy on you if you use that cup you take the water and you want to use that cup to drink ah and you are caught <laughs> praise god that is the level of their hygiene that no you must not use your mouth you know to drink that put it in your own cup because that cup is just to go and take the water from the pot but technology advancement microwave micro this micro that five minutes two minutes all those things yes it has its own attending challenges and also but they will use local pot so that sister has a pot that he used to cook praise God and um, we used to cook you know has a stove and whenever she goes to church brother Bible study or she's not around this particular family they will go and take a pot to cook but they will wash it and put it as if nobody touched it and this sister knew that they were using my pot she did not complain but one day the child after using it to go and return it the pot broke the pot fell down and broke ah they have beat the woman i'm sorry the child blue and black and they are muslims by the child by the time the sister came you know you can't hide something in the face when i face you people everybody know 
and say, ah, you know, auntie, please, oh, we are sorry. This is the first time we will use your portal. Look at this boy that is said is like, you know, the way they will begin to rant. rant. It is that he just broke this. This is the first time. And they understand, ah, no, is it because of Paul? No, don't worry. Don't beat him. This and that. All right. This and that. Ah. Number one, they were surprised that that was not how to post. That the lady was not angry. He said, no, 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 leave it. Ah, is it not a pot? This and that. The second lady, the sister was coming from work. She went to go and buy two. One to replace. And asked, ah, mommy, so, so, and so. Look. I bought a pot for you. This is for you. He said, you bought pot for us? That won the heart of this family. And the husband told the uh, wife and said, make sure you are closer, you are closer to that lady. Um, follow her to our church. It would even be the husband and said, follow her to our church. You be going first with the children later and that's how the whole family got converted into the church of the sister what am I saying we can parent the children that are not under good parent take care around us parents are you listening to me and of course orphans and abandoned children receive parental care from non-governmental um, uh, from non-parent blood relations like the NGOs, right? so there is an orphanage, there is a, um, a, what do you call it? Uh, uh, homes where motherless homes. What those people are trying to do is what is lacking about parental care is transmitted to that child. There are about four types of parenting styles. Number one, there is authoritarian parenting style what is authoritarian parenting it is one way mode of communication we are the parent establishes strict rules that the child obeys there is still there is little or no room for negotiation from the child there is a parenting style that is authoritarian at the end of the day when I give you this first style you decide which one is the best or maybe I will wrap it up for you to understand what you can pick an age. Now, authoritarian parental style, that is what our parents use for us. Praise God. When they say, hey, it is A. You don't even have to talk back. Is that not so? Praise God. It is authoritarian. Uh, they say, when that is, even if you go and complain to your mommy, hey, that is so and say, ah. You don't share your mind. When your daddy speak, it is what? It is final. Even when you want to send your mommy to go and negotiate on your behalf. Abby, your mommy say, lie, lie. Don't put me into problem. Your daddy has spoken. <laughs> that is authoritarian parental style. Now, the child, there are strict rules. You must do it this way. And if the child does not do it that way, there are consequences. Number two, there is authoritative parenting what do I call it authoritative for authoritative parenting this parent typically develops a close nurturing relationship with their children the authoritative parenting, parenting or parenting style there is a kind of relationship with their children they have clear guidelines for their expectation and explain their reasons associated with disciplinary actions. Now they say, well, this is the reason why this is have to be done and they have clear guidelines the way it should be done. Alright? And to know that, well, there is this consequence if it is not done but it's not like the author authorita author I mean, authoritarian that they don't even need to tell you why you are to do what. But just obey the final command like in the military obey the last command now they have clear guidelines and of course disciplinary methods are used as a way of support instead of punishment can you see now disciplinary method 
they are used as a way of what? Support, not punishment. That's why I said, train up a child in the way he should go. The rod is not necessarily to inflict injury, but the rod is to bring correction, a discipline, all right, method used in a way to support is not for the purpose of punishment. Not only can a child have input into goals and expectation, but there are also frequent and appropriate levels of communication between the parents and their children. Now, it is not the goals. They set the rules together, all right? The children have input. Allow your children to talk. Let them, when you say, we want to do so, so and so, or these are the rules you want to bring, what do you see to it? Let them contribute to it. So, for the authoritative parenting, the children have their input. It is all of us, we agree. Are you following me now? We agree. We are to, we are, we are to do so, so and so, so, so and so time. House cleaning, we agree. It must be done at so, so and so time all together. These are the things we need to do. There is an agreement. In fact, what you call the values in the family, you spell it out together and ask, what is their opinion? When you see something, say something. So if there is anything you see in your school, this and that, look, say it. If there is anything, don't cow in, don't keep anything to yourself. If there is anything you are facing, we must not hide anything from ourselves in this family. You understand what I'm saying now? That is the values. Or what do you see to it? Say, yes, mommy, yes, it is true. Whatever we see, let's talk about it. If you raise them that way, if somebody is trying to take advantage of them, they have told you at home. If anything that happens, if somebody touched them, you know, in an unbecoming way, they are coming to do what? To tell you. Ah, somebody, our uncle did this today or somebody in the neighborhood did this today now they have given you you they know because you said the rules you said the values you said the, 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 the discipline and everything you set it together they have input they are they, they allow communic I mean communication from also their input generally this parenting style leads to the healthiest outcomes for children but requires a lot of patience an airport from both sides. Is somebody hearing me? Is the breast parenting style. But it requires patience. Praise the Lord that you are patient with the children to grasp what you are trying to tailor them through. You may have to repeat some things over and over until it sinks. When they grow from one stage to the other, you begin to no, there must be a reinforcement of idea you have to do some things to let them remember until they get to teenage shout hallelujah if you raise up your children uh, no, your children cannot be cocaine they can't be dealing in cocaine they can't be smoking because of the way you have raised them they have not seen in the family you don't do shady things you don't do shady things they understand what you are doing if you are a 419 the children gen, gen alpha they know they want to want, look what is daddy is doing on computer every time they want to find out praise the lord the day you forget to do this and that in fact when they would take, get, know your password you wouldn't know that they have gotten your password they are so smart that by the time they say, okay, what is, the, what is likely going to be the password of daddy? Praise God. When they try three times, they will get it. Because you, what is your password? You look at what you are not going to forget. Eh? Like your age. Abby? Date of birth. Because that is, that is, you are, <laughs> God help your brain. Praise God. They know that what can daddy use as password? Age? Date of birth? Okay, what are the best uh, alphabet of daddy? Uh, the name, you can use the name, what is the, do you know what A represents in numeric, in numerical? Do you know what B represents? They are, they are wired. And I tell they'll get it and they won't tell you. 
So why they know that they want to, what is this man doing? Some children know their parents are for one night. That they are scammers. But because they must not be hard, they will keep it to themselves. Hallelujah. Authoritative parenting results in children who are confident. Somebody follow me? Responsible. Self-regulated. And they have emotional intelligence. The third one is permissive parenting. What do I call it? Permissive parenting tends to be warm. Look at this permissive parenting now. If you are not careful, you say it is good. Permissive parenting, there are some things that be good in some things, but just look at it. Tends to be warm and nurturing. Set minimal expectations. Minimal expectations. Impose limited rules. They allow the children in some areas, they impose limited rules. They allow children to figure things out of themselves. That sounds nice, okay? Now, if you combine that to authoritative, you allow them to figure things out of themselves, it is going to be a plus to authoritative parenting. Then also, but not that they figure it out and let them do it the way they like. The permissive parenting, we allow them to do it the way they like. Amen. They allow children to figure things out of themselves, rarely use of discipline. They don't discipline. They act more than friends than parents. Are you following me? They act more than what? Than parents. No. There must be a clear demarcation. There can be friendship in authoritative parenting. But yet, they understand that this is my dad, this is my mom. And they have a kind of leadership role. Is that not so? Aha. But the permissive parenting, limited rules can lead to wrong, like wrong eating habits. In such home, because they have money, this and that. Eh, hey, mommy, I want cake. Go and take it. Mommy, I want this. Go and take it. Hey, when you are coming, you buy ice cream today. You buy that, you go tomorrow. You buy everything. And they can just go and eat. I say, leave them, leave them. God has blessed us. Like some careless daddy. God has blessed, let them use it. Some people say, when I was like them, my parents did not have money. Now I have the money. Let them eat it until they become obese. Obese, what do you call it? Become obese at the young age because of lack of control, lack of discipline. Amen. And of course, this little health challenges. How can a 12-year-old child begin to have diabetics? Just because of the wrong way of eating. Because there is no guide. There is no parenting. There is no, you know, you understand something now? These are the things, um, if you allow them to do it the way they like, they may injure themselves. And lastly there is uninvolved. Uninvolved uninvolved parenting, children are given lots of freedom. The parents stay out of the way and many times unavailable. And of course, there are lots of parenting father and mother today that they don't have time for their children. Daddy is a businessman. Mommy is a career woman. And they will leave the children in the hands of a carer and a housemaid. If the child that is an housemaid in your house, if she has parents and they understand parenting, people that gave back to her, she will not end up becoming an house help. Three of us. So a child that is not taught, a child that is not raised, a child that is from a dysfunction home. Now you employ that child to take care of of your children and you are not there a child that needs to be cared for I'm not saying you should not allow bring such a child but when he's helping you you should understand that the parenting of that child God has also put it in your hands 
So it's not just that. I will give you them food, take care of them all, play with them all, and you go in the morning till 8 p.m., till 7 p.m. Because you're a career woman and your husband has traveled, so he's a business person. You are playing with your future, the future of your children. Some parents will cry. They are laughing today, but they will cry tomorrow. When their children turn to become vagabonds, irresponsible, smokers, people that are indulged in so many things. Hallelujah. They fulfill the child basic needs, but are detached from the children. They can't give them everything, but they are detached from the children. And now to also take us to the fact that, look, if you are still bearing children, bear, give back to children you can train. Hello? Don't say, ah, it is God that is giving children. God has written the number of children I'm going to bomb before I come. Now lie. Praise God. How long do you call you? I want to Hey, you are going to be a baby. You are a baby. If you don't give back all the children in your body, eh, it can lead to sickness. Eh? It's not because the children are there. <laughs> Now, you see, you'll be surprised that there are people who go to school, who went to university, who went to, they still carry some mentality of the oldies. And also, I say, no, uh, what, well, my parents gave back to 12. I see I have six. Eh? I know where I am going. Eh? Where you go? And also some people say, ah, man, hey, look at that. My husband said, he do, my husband does not like, uh, what do you call it? Family planning. And the man said, no, I don't like family planning. He's so spiritual, he does not want planning, planning, planning. But he cannot practice abstinence. If you don't want family planning, then you should be ready to follow abstinence. Is that so? To know, okay, at least, if the woman does not even know how to calculate if it is only five times that she can calculate that she's free in a month and be satisfied with that five times. But you want to climb that woman every time and you don't want I say no, I don't believe. Who are you not to believe? Praise God. And you also, you are going to the liberal room five times, six times, seven times. He said, because my husband likes children. In our house also, we love children. I hope that what will not kill you is not what you are practicing. Mom is in the house. To go to labor room and come out. Is it not grace? And that's why I said, there are some of these young people, when they were, why want to give back to the child? Go to the labor room. Just look at the way the woman watches managing pain. Before she brings forth, it will make to respect that woman. But because you are not the one carrying the pregnancy, at the time of delivery, you are not even available. They always call you, ah, congratulations. You are never there at any time. <laughs> you are not a father. I hope you are not a mother. Praise God. Because you are irresponsible father. Say Amen. We must learn from this parenting to make sure that we practice good parenting system. We have responsibilities. Our generation is becoming explosive. You must be careful of what your children watch. Some of this cartoon your children are watching, for those who analyze this, many of them are occultic. Am I right? Eh? Many of them are occultic. The people that put those cartoons in place, they are occultic people. So your children can be learning witchcraft without you knowing. Because what they see on that cartoon, it is programmed towards that. You must be able to let your children understand that either on the computer or or, or on, your, on the Android phone, there are sites you don't go into. Shade them away from pornography. When you are giving them your Android phone to go and work with, make sure that there is restriction. But look, I don't know generation you will belong to. 
I mean, I don't know what they don't even have a name for your generation. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. The generation of uh, uh, of ODs, if not primitive. Huh? Gen X. Uh -huh. So, so those are the Gen X talking. So the Gen X, how to put restriction when they tell you that you can put uh, uh, children, kiddie con restriction on tele. They are what? Baby poop. I'm not worried. Praise God. But now, I am, what I'm saying is that there are restrictions you can put on your Android. Am I right? Before you give to your child whether to play with, whether to, uh, to do assignment with. Is that also? You have put that restriction. But because we don't even know how to manipulate all these things, just give it to them. And you don't know that they have gone to another site watching something else like pornography like sex they see some things which they are not supposed to see and because all the things that they see or all the things they want to practice in the name of cartoon you are reprogramming their mind you are reprogramming their their head all right their psychology their psycho system is being affected the cognitive their cognitive you know is being you know uh, 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 polluted and at the end of the day you begin to see the reply there is nothing you see shout hallelujah i know some of you gen, gen x i'm sure that uh, if it is not because today uh, jerry jerry and what now tom and jerry it's not like it's not common again abby uh, but you know how you bought tom and jerry for your children what did you learn in tom and jerry violence hatred fighting three of us mischief uh, down eh? that is what Tom and Jerry is, is like two people who can never be friends two people that are looking for the downfall of uh, of each other who is going to plan to make sure that when the other one is paid you'll be you'll be you'll be happy happy that is what you are telling them now you think it's a good cartoon Tom and Jerry ah Tom and Jerry ah Tom and Jerry ah Tom and Jerry that is how some of generic children become wicked they are very very slime Abi, I think my English is correct I'm learning how to speak English praise God you know they are not they are very because they have learned Tom and Jerry let us understand that parenting is work when you are not ready for parenting don't marry celibacy is allowed in the Pentecostal you can be a celibate if you know you are not ready for serious parenting give back to the number of children you can manage praise God I say praise the Lord because the children you even have one day they will go amen I was saying I could read this uh, last few weeks that we this and um, <laughs> my uh, father in the Lord Pastor Daramala he has a very you know gigantic house and uh, compound and things like that but today it is becoming an empty place it is only when we came I mean people like that we come this and that at this last time now that we are around in fact the house was so busy and because of ministers conference I know and think that myself and himself we have to even sleep on the same bed praise God we have to sleep on the same bed he said want to go and I said I mean we have to sleep on the same bed now that's another level of relationship you get you understand I'm saying now? but what i'm saying is that he is thinking of adopting children now he's working on adoption how he can get you know children of age 10 11 12 13 that could be adopted and i told him i have not told my wife i said please when you get through with that i think we also will need to praise god eh? as when you get you through they, they, they just say that it is just that if you raise them and what what do you want to bequeath to a child because a child is answering my name eh? how many things do you think i want to leave for any child the best legacy is education amen some of the children you send abroad when they come home they don't even stay in your house they'll go and stay in the hotel am i right have you have not had such things eh? because the heat in your house if you like put on fan they cannot satisfy them and they prefer 
that how much how much is your hotel how much that few dollars cannot <laughs> cannot rent you know that they can even pay for one month in the hotel if they want to how much does it cost them to do that and these are the people you are building house for you have house here you have out there you have out there you have there as if they are coming to stay in that house so the best is to invest in the education of your children or the skill development and they become a mighty harrow doing exploits that also in their different fields that is what you owe them so if you meant also like the, the, the person said i want to have two children you know and they, they want to help him to get two children into the family that is can i mean they answer his name send them to school send them to university this and that and uh, by the time say so if that one when the, he will get another but to have children regularly in your home abby there are children outside there that are looking for help they don't some don't have parents they are grown up there are orphans they are grown up when they develop in in orphanage homes at a particular day time they are looking for parents that can you know that can uh, uh, take up them the responsibility i am saying that if it is only one or two children you have the ability to give attention to don't go beyond your limits because parenting is work so from the four type of parenting styles which one are you praise god you don't need to answer me you are the one to go back with your husband even if you are a single parent praise god you are still a parent be proud of the status you find yourself hallelujah because some of the time I say, hey, my husband is late. Hey, my husband has done this. My husband has divorced me. I have problem in my marriage. And I'm not the one carrying it alone. Give thanks to God that you have children. Some people, they are in the parents, I mean, they're in the house of their husband. They don't have children. They are married for 20 years, no child. But there is another counsel for such people. If they understand what parenting is all about, I can't say people today that if you are married for four years, five years, and your wife has not conceived, go and adopt. It does not destroy your faith. Is somebody hearing me? Tell them it doesn't cancel what God wants to do in their lives. The fact that you adopt does not mean you are not going to have children also. But instead of living 50 years, 20 years, this and that, and you are still on the same position. If you have been able to adopt a child, that child will have grown. Is that not so? And it's your child. Children that are born through IVF, don't you call them your children? Praise God. Even when you don't even know the process, how they became, you know. Those who use surrogates, that somebody help you to carry the, ba the baby. All right, they planted the egg and the sperm, and somebody carried baby. People have the money, and you give back. Is that is it not your child? It doesn't matter whichever way child comes into the world. The most important thing is that will there be a blessing to their generation or there will be a crisis? So, somebody married, hey, I'm expecting two years, three years, four years. If you have an opportunity, adopt a child, raise a child, and what God will do and their example has been that so many people at that age it is not until when it is when the woman is 50 you are not thinking adoption in fact the law of adoption like I learned in this uh, my last trip is that they told I don't know that, look when somebody is 50 55 you can no longer adopt a child a baby because you can't adopt a child without government permission Whichever way, uh, they saw that child, uh, they saw it on the, you know, on the street. You can't carry it to your house. You go to jail. It has to pass through government approved papers. And if you are 50, the government said they can't give you a baby to adopt. Why? Because the better part of your life is gone. They want to see that that child will not be an orphan. Because when you are 50, by the time, if you are not careful between 60, 70, Abby, that child has not evolved fully and you are done so the problem they are trying to avoid uh, is back so if somebody is uh, 35 
a woman 35 and you know 40 they had i mean you have the opportunity you will give you a child to adopt god making it you know you know out i mean making wait for that we must be wise i don't know whether you have learned something this morning are you blessed let's rise as we pray together it's a special service let's give thanks to god for the life of our children let's thank god for everything god has done for us let's thank god for his grace upon our life rise up quickly and let's give thanks open your mouth and give thanks lord we thank you for today's service thank you so much lord for the children that you have given to us thank you so much lord for the children you see give to me thank you for wisdom that you're going to give to me to raise these children in the way of the lord to train them in the way that they will go the bible says when they come when they when they are old they will not depart from it when they are old they will not depart from it give thanks very quickly give thanks give thanks give thanks to god and i want you to pray that god come and help me lord i ask that you help me oh lord if you are believing for your own children god give me children talk to god ask for wisdom ask for grace and what you have learned today lord i'll be able to put into practice that i'll be able to put into practice let your grace lord be sufficient for me make me an example we have been a bad example to my children god help me to correct my ways when some of the children that have, you see the gen z that are working naked today many of them landed from homes because what concerns their parents or mothers is just fashion no spiritual development no fear of god when you come late to church you are training that child that look church is not a place to be taken seriously that's what you are doing you are their first teacher when you come to church say i'm not going to church today and so all of them are not going to church you are telling the child the child that well it's not every time you need to make sacrifice or discipline to serve god you can sit down at home at another time you had a false teacher whatever they now turn out to be and you are making noise that ah, my child does not go to church my child does not this and that my child is following you know bad you know grand is she because he has never learned the value of serving god from his or her childhood you make sacrifice let your children in the church join choir join one team or the other let them be trained don't just say yes yeah, let them just go to school no it must be like i read to us parenting involved spiritual uh yeah i mean in, in the process of, of 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 raising a child spiritually socially let your children be able to understand you know social values academically every physically neatness let your children learn how to be clean you parents that you have i mean that your children they are of the age that they can wash plates insist that no plate must sleep in the sink unwashed overnight let it be a discipline uh, mommy i will wash it tomorrow never that the values in this home does not you know accept that that every plate that is dirty in the sink must be washed the clean kitchen must be clean not that i will clean it tomorrow those are the values and that's what they are going to grow with let them understand some basic things how to lay bed how to clean the house how to do some some some, some house chores you must teach them you must give them the opportunity and let them see the importance thank you father in jesus mighty name we have prayed I want all our